talking about mutations. And yesterday we discussed some information. So just to quickly go through, what are mutations? Armel. Uh, changes in DNA that affect genetic information. Changes in DNA that affect genetic information. So what kind of changes in DNA? Number, type, uh, Numbers, types, and order. order of what though? Of the bases. Make sure if you do not have the number, because it says when bases are changed, make sure you underline when bases are changed. And the bases are going to be changed by either the number of bases that are going to be there. And we say the number of bases, we're talking about the number of bases that appear after which process? Um, DNA replication. DNA replication. Very good, Armel. The type of bases that appear after everybody? And the order of bases that appear after? DNA replication. Think back to our forks, and that's why if you look behind um, Jamil, I put up a remember when. This is going to help you to keep focusing back on some of the things that we did that maybe you forget why we did it. Later on in the semester, you're going to forget, kind of, or try to forget, or almost forget, why we made ice cream sundaes. So when you think back, or what we did actually, you'll be like, oh, we made ice cream sundaes. Oh, we made them, we had chocolate chips. That all came from us creating our protein, which came from, and it'll help you start to remember back. So when we say think back to the forks, remember, we had a prototype of the fork. What was the prototype? The one that was the one that we wanted to model after, correct? Mm -hmm. So every single fork should have looked like that one, correct? Yes. But all of them did it. So therefore, when it got copied, Something in the copying process was changed. It could have been the number. I need you to get it together. So whether it be the number of items that needed to be used to make that fork, the type of items, or the order it was put into place to make that fork. So those are what mutations are. Got it? Because they'll pay attention because I'm going to be calling you quite a lot. Because I see the all right, so what type of mutation is it when we actually leave a base out? Jo uh, Joel. Deletion. Now, I want to bring a point to you that you may see it called point deletion because it may have been one particular ba base that's left out. When there's a whole shift of them, then we're calling them, then it's frame. Those are the frame shifts. So you can actually put point above and like in parentheses so it can say point deletion because you'll see that and I want you to think it's a different thing. But obviously deletion means that a base has been left out. And we look here, it actually changes quite a bit. Instead of being the fat cat ate the rat, it should have copied as that. Now it's the fat ate the rat. Whole thing was left out. All right, then our second type, an extra base is added. Um, Malik, insertion. You can also call it addition. And also you'll see it as point addition or point insertion. We good? There has been something deleted. The latest, if you notice, the cat's no longer here. Base pairs have been deleted. All right. So here we have the fat cat ate the rat. We have a whole nother set of bases that changes the sentence altogether. When we went from here, we talked about frame shift. Correct? Yes, so over here, we added some information about frame shift. What did we add? Shifting the base of air flows. Okay, raise your hand so that we can get one voice <coughs> talking. Go ahead, um, Elijah. Uh, shifting the base, base pair codes uh, can result in a change. So shifting base pair code. There's a problem with it. Okay. So frame shift is when we shift in the base pair code. So when we shift that, that's actually going to create a new set of three bases, correct? Mm -hmm. So when we, if we have AAT, but, or let's take it here, we had CCG and we kind of, this one is deletion, and we take something out, we now have CCG. That's a total different set. Um, Madison, pay attention up here. That's a total different set. So now we're going to end up with the total different. What did you add to? What did you tell me here? Uh, amino acid. Keep oh, happy about this. Uh, what happened? Um, could result in a change of amino acid. Could, and we'll and we'll talk about why we're saying could instead of would. Can't spell today. 
could result in a change of amino acid because of the base pair shift. If it results in a change of amino acid, what else could happen? What's the problem, Jaden? So the problem, different, wrong, and one thing I want you to add, or no protein at all. So different, wrong, or no protein. Because we notice in our base, we have these two things that are very important in our protein making. One is at the beginning and one is at the end. What are they? What are those words we saw at the beginning and at the end of our protein making, our amino acids? Start, and then we had a stop. What if we never have a start? Then it wouldn't make, it wouldn't create it, correct? What if we never had to stop? And it wouldn't finish, it wouldn't finish it out. So that would be a definite problem. Or if we have the wrong base code, then we would have the wrong uh, protein or a different protein that's supposed to be made. Questions about that? Do you want to put that, that took away? Are we good here? Yes. Yes? Okay, very good. Let's move on. All right, so this is just an example that we looked at on yesterday. I wanted to just review this because we were kind of moving fast and moving out. The only TTG that we're going to actually delete here would actually be just this one. So in case you all did not see that, if we deleted this TTG here, notice the friendship. We still end up with CCA. We still have CTT. I want you to have your booklets out. But now we have what? G-A-C, and then C-G-A. Look in your booklets and tell me, I want you to look and see what amino acid coded for these three. Right now, these this 330, 331, and 332 before the deletion. What amino acids were they? Now, it's a trick, so what did you have to do first? Change. You have to change it. This is the DNA strand. We have to look at the complementary mRNA strand. Remember, once it breaks apart, mRNA is Kanye. Wait, I'm going to let you finish, but first, God, let me take a selfie. Well, actually, yeah, let me take a selfie making a copy of what is there in my phrase, so we can say that. All right, so what should this be if we're doing mRNA? G, G, G U, U. No, that's A. Wait, wait, wait. That's A. That's A. G -A. Excellent. G A A. This is the mRNA. This is the DNA. So it broke apart. First, let me take a selfie. I'm going to let you finish. So in order to look at the amino acids, we have to look at the mRNA. That's what's going to do the transcription and the translation. Then this one would be C, C, C A, A, this one would be C, U, U, G, G. Okay, now what's the amino acid? Glutamic acid. What's the question? Somebody said wait. No, I said before. Right now we're looking at what it should be. If we, if we, no, there was no deletion, no mutation occurred. This would be glutamic. Oh, pro, pro, proline or something. No, glutamine. Glutamine. This is glutamic acid. This is glutamine. And this is what? Spell it for me. Lucy. Lucy. All right. But if there was a mutation, notice mutation doesn't happen in the mRNA strand. It happens in the R -R -R DNA strand. Notice the deletion happens in the DNA strand. So if the deletion happens in the DNA strand when the copying happens, question. What is it? L-E-U. C U G should be L E U like Lucy. What the whole thing? L E U. Oh, Lucy. I thought you said Lucy. I apologize. Okay. So back to what I was saying. The mutation happens in the DNA strand, and then we have to be able to do that transcription and translation first. Let me take a selfie. Comes in. So if the mutation happened, this is the new 
mutated DNA. And why is it mutated? What changed? Except there was a deletion. All right, so we move here. So now we have the mRNA. mRNA doesn't know it's, there's a mutation. It's like, wait, first, let me take selfie. It's going to copy whatever is here in its own term. So now we still have whatever this was. But now let's go here. This should be G. A. 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 So that's still good. That's still going to be glutamic acid. But now we have C. U. G. And then G. U. G. C. U. What? What are these? It's L. This one is glutamic because we can see this here. C U G, so we don't have to look in our book that we, we used our resources that we already have here. But what's G C A? G C U. Is there a problem? Yes. Now we don't know if these proteins do the same thing, but we do see that there's a problem in the protein making process because there's a problem in the chains of amino acids. Got it? Questions about that? Okay. Huh? Remember, as a, remember, this whole process is creating a chain of amino acids. A chain of amino acids gives us a protein. protein. It's a problem if it's the wrong protein. Uh. Proteins make you who you are. That's like going to the store and you're ordering your ice cream sundae that we did, and you want to have chocolate chips, or let's use Terrell for an example. You want vanilla ice cream, not chocolate. You want to make sure you have whipped cream, not chocolate chips. You want to make sure you have vanilla wafers, not chocolate Oreos. But you get in there and you give the information and you tell them exactly what you want, but they write it out, chocolate ice cream, chocolate chips, because you're saying not, and they write it off, and they come to you and they bring you this chocolate ice cream with chocolate chips and Oreos. Is that a problem? Mm -hmm. That's not what he ordered. And he's allergic. All right. Then if we look here, this is just another one. We're not going to go all the way through this because I believe you guys see the point, correct? Yeah. But if we insert it, the G um, at number 37, and we put a G in here, that's going to shift it all the way down. So now we're going to end with G-A-T, A-T-A, C-C-A, and then we have an extra base. Does that make sense? Okay, very good. All right, so types of mutations, back to your notes. When the wrong mutation is used, As we have here, if we look at this, it should have copied CG, CG, CG pair, but instead it did CG and then an AT pair. If I, if I, you come into school one day and the wrong teacher's here, because I'm absent, you're gonna have a what? Um, I'm, I'm, I understand you're probably gonna be upset and very angry and crying and your world's gonna be over. <laughs> but like yesterday, when you came in, I wasn't here, you had a substitute, and that's exactly what this is, substitution. I'm sorry I ruined your world yesterday. No, you were all you upset. Yeah, Huh? So, in this instance, we would have go back to our original sentence the fat cat ate the rat. But if we said the fat hat ate the rat, that makes it totally different, right? Yeah. Any questions about this? All right. Yes. They substituted. This is gone, and they substituted with this. No, because insertion means we added another one. And right now, it's the same amount of base pairs. Insertion means an extra base pair. Deletion means a uh, removal of a base pair. Substitution means same base, same number, but a different one is in there. Questions? That was a good question because that you need to see that. All right. All right. Now you try. I want you to take a look at your notes, and I want you if the DNA sequence is this for here. What should? Oh gosh, I'm getting too. All right, but you don't have it on your paper, so. Do it now. Put it on your paper? No, I didn't. 
No, I have, if the DNA strand one is T-G-A-G-C-C-A-T-G-A, what should strand two complementary be? That's what I want you to do while I fix this. Well, remember, where does the mutation happen? Where does the mutation happen? DNA. DNA. At the top of your paper, right now, before we move on, next to your title, but mutations happen in the DNA. DNA strand. Mutations happen in the DNA strand. Mutations happen in the DNA strand. Very good. Okay, this is what you have. <laughs> Alright, again, mutations happen in the DNA. So this strand here is the DNA strand in sequence one. That's why it asks, what should the complementary strand two be, which is the DNA strand? What should it be? That means there's no mutation. It should be what, Joel? C G G. I mean C G. Be quiet, whoever is talking. Uh, did you put two Nope, I just put one. Oh, yeah, no, uh, T, A, C. Shut up, bro. Hey, hey, hey. Can I ask you to stop? Whoever it is. Go ahead. Oh, All right. No, because again, this is the what? DNA strand. There is no U in DNA. There's only A, G, T, C. When is the U used? In mRNA. Right now, we're only looking at the DNA. All right, so let's check and see if he's correct. Yep, that would be correct, yes. Huh? I think I wanted to do that for something else, that's why. Yeah, I did. I wanted to do it for something else, that's why. All right, so this is what it should be. But what we're going to do is you're looking at the two base pair sequences. What is the mutation? This is sequence one. This is the, so this would be DNA strand. Go ahead and label it. No mutation. And this is the mutated. If I say mutated, what am I talking, what am I meaning? Change in the DNA. What of the DNA? Genetic activity. What, what genetic activity? Basis. Basis, very good. So this is the mutated DNA strand. So now when you look at this and compare it to this, so you're comparing, what's the mutation? Take a moment and do that. One second. Ten seconds. Thank you. Ten. Five seconds. Don't yell out. Odell, what's the what's the uh, mutation? Substitution? No. Oh, I didn't ask you to yell out. What did we substitute? Um, we had switched out C and G, and then we had to go up to G. You said I switched out. Well, let's take a look here. Is this the same? Yeah. Yeah. No. Is this the same? Yes. Do we have an AT? Yes. GC pair? Yes. CG pair? No. 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 So this is the problem, but let's take a look. What comes next here? CG. CG. So here's our CG right here, so something's going on here, but we don't know yet. What's next? AT. AT. 
And then we have, do we have a CG after that? Do we have a T? Yes. What about a T A pair? Yes. A G C? Yes. And an A T? Yes. So if we count them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So therefore, what is it? It's insertion. It's insertion. Insertion, also known as? Addition. Addition. Point. 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 Insertion or addition? Point insertion or addition? Because we added an extra one, yeah. right? If it were, Odell, substitution, there would be the same amount with the difference. All right? The landing. Um, certain things fix themselves that we're going to talk about, but some things are un ir irreversible. All right. So causes of mutation. Let's move through. It's a Let me know. All right. There are two ways in which DNA can become mutated. One way is it can be... What do I mean by inherited? That's it. Joel, go ahead. From who? From your parents. So parent to child. That means in the sperm and in the eggs. Or the sperm or the eggs. So that means you could have, it could have been passed through from your dad or passed through from your mom. These would be called gametes, which we'll learn about in a little bit. G A M E T E X. I'll put it in there. Another way would be acquired, meaning that they came from your environment. Or it could just be a mistake that happens in your DNA. So it can be acquired, meaning that you didn't get it from parents. It happened through your life. So it happened during life. No, it's not a mutation. All right, so that means that sometimes your DNA copies and sometimes mistakes just happen in the copying process. Or there's environmental damage from mutagens. Meaning that you've been exposed. Radiation. Guys, we'll get to it. Let's pay attention first. So you've been exposed to something. Underline the word mutagen. <coughs> Does everyone have this? No. Everyone is, are you seeing the red? Okay, or should I write another color? Huh? Blue? Blue's gonna be seen. I'll write in black. No blue's gonna be seen very good on this um, green screen. Are we good? Can I erase this? Yes. You're not gonna be able to sit right there. Those people aren't gonna be able to see you. And you can see right from where you are, though. Go sit back where you are. Go sit back where you are. Don't worry about it. I'll um, give them up in there. And a family referral. And <laughs> All righty. So, causes of mutations are mutagens. This is what you just had. This is anything that causes a change in DNA. 
So if it causes a change in DNA, then we call it a mutagen. mutagen and mutagen causes changes in DNA. Which are called? Mutagen. Mutation. Mutation. So mutagens cause mutations. mutations. Because this means mutation. So mutagens cause mutations. Any questions? All right, make sure you guys get this done. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples and right on that line, it's a long line, so you're gonna write down just these a couple of examples as we go through any questions. Uh, we're used in buildings for insulation. So that keeps the buildings warm. Um, and it was used in the insulation, and what happens is when it becomes airborne, then it becomes a problem. Um, and when people inhale that, people who are working on the building, and they've inhaled that, they uh, expose themselves, and that causes their DNA to change, which could cause some mutation. All right, cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke is a mutagen, which means it could cause... Which means it can cause... It's a mutagen, so which means it could cause... Mutation. 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 You're exposing yourself to danger, which you're putting yourself, making yourself susceptible to being sick. Like, like, is this is a lot worse. Than, just it's worse, but they, but what's worse than worse? They're both worse, right? No, but like, uh, I know, I know what you're saying, but I'm just saying it, they're both bad. So uh, Arya brought up a good point. Cancer, cancer is a mutation because it's an overcopying of your your cells. It's an ex ex excessive copying of cells. You don't need too many cells, but that's what cancer is. Too many cells being copied. All right, another example is x-ray. This is why they don't try to overly x-ray you at um, the dentist or the doctor's office. <laughs> Can it be bad for you? What did we just say? X-rays are what? X-rays are what? Mutagen, which means that it could cause a mutation. You're exposing your body to this radioactive machine that's looking through your body, it could alter your DNA. So that's why they don't, that's why they don't, um, that's what I'm telling you right now. That's why, it, because it exposes yourself to these radiations that takes a picture of the inside of your body. And so it could cause changes. Now, I'm not saying that you get it, to get an x-ray today that's gonna happen, but overexposure, you're um, making yourself susceptible. UV lights. UV lights could come from the sun, so too much exposure to the sun. We have our ozone layer to protect us from those ultraviolet rays. We learned that last year. But also going to tanning booths. Those are UV lights also. All right, nuclear radiation. That's a mutagen, which means it could cause a mutation. Because that's over now. <laughs> It's a very radioactive chemical, so therefore it can alter your DNA. Nitrous acid. It's actually in food preservatives, so like jellies, breads, peanut butters, things like that, because it helps to preserve your food so that it doesn't go bad. So it can sit on the shelf, too much exposure to that. But it's also in your stomach acid. Your stomach per, uh, produces this nitrous acid, which could cause altering in your DNA. Awesome. So. <laughs> can I help? What you say? <laughs> yeah, that's not really an acid. They just call it that. I, I don't know. I have to look that up. All right. Um, I want you to use the term mutation and mutagen in a sentence. Go now. 30 seconds. It should not take you any longer than that. Go. And you're on your paper. I want you to create a sentence that uses both mutation and mutagen. Go. Hey, I don't hear a sentence there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You're thinking too deep. 2, 1. Give me your sentence. Well, we said teenage 2D. What? Oh, no, 2D. No. Say it out, Jamil. 
Mutations are caused by me. Yeah. You didn't even get your statement. I said, you the following terms in the same sentence. There you go. A simple sentence is made up of two words. Yeah. 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 A simple sentence. And basically what you're doing is you're just giving the definition. You're substituting the words. So you have mutation is caused by a mutagen. Or mutagen causes mutation. mutation. Very good. Put your hand down. Joel, come on, let's move. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, thank you. I love hearing your voice. All right. Mutations are anything that causes muti uh, mutagens are anything that causes mutations, or mutations are caused by mutagens. Yolandis, I hope you have your sentence and I want you to stop talking. Thank you. All right. Right underneath there where it says mutations can be, right underneath there you have a space where it says corrected by DNA repair. So it's telling you mutations can actually be corrected by DNA repair. Mutations actually can be beneficial. Some people's genes or DNA mutates and it mutates into a way that they are immune to HIV. So their body are not their body's not going to be affected by it. That's not well, there's tests that have been that have happened. So scientists are studying those individuals with those mutations to see if they can pass that on to others. So it's very rare. Uh, it's very rare. Can we put that on the Yes, example, immunity to HIV and other diseases. Guys, I want we need to move through because we have this activity we need to do and then we're going to be starting a review today. All right, mutations can be deleterious. What does that mean? Uh, well, if you delete something, if I came over to you and I started taking away your things, you'd be pretty upset, right? Yes. So that's a bad thing. So this is where your harmful comes in. Deleterious means harmful. So you could have mutations that benefit, and then you could have mutations that harm. Some examples of deleterious mutations would be sickle cell anemia. Blood cells are supposed to be, red blood cells are supposed to copy to look exactly like they're supposed to look, where they're circular with this little carb in the middle. But sometimes your blood cells form, well not yours, but sometimes people's blood cells have that circular shape. So therefore they don't look like this. This would be a normal one like we saw when we talked about active and passive transport. And this would be a sickle particular one, and that's a problem because now they can't pass through your capillaries, which means they get stuck, which means it stops the flow of what? Blood. Well, what do we talk about? What's the purpose of the blood flowing? Oxygen, carrying oxygen through the body. That's a problem. Yes. It could do that too. So, uh, so it's not a disease? It is a disease. Sickle cell anemia is a, a disease is anything that affects the body. But it's not, it's not contagious. What's this thing? It's like a full blood, but blister. Yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a full, uh, <laughs> Another one would be Down syndrome. Down syndrome is an extra copying of a chromosome. Well, you probably should think about your question because it's an extra copying of a chromosome, so something happened extra. All right. Some are harmless. Some can cause a benefit where it causes immunity, HIV, and other diseases. Some are deleterious, like sickle cell and Down syndrome. And some are harmless, meaning that the copying of the DNA did not go correctly, but it doesn't harm or hurt you in any type of way. These examples would be eye color. Some people have a blue and a brown eye. You've seen the, those twins on Instagram. Those little light-skinned twins, those little pretty girls. One, one, is, one girl has a brown and a blue eye. Doesn't affect her sight, doesn't affect anything about her, just the way she looks. Birthmarks, how many of you have a birthmark? Mutant, 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 mutant. All of you are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not everybody has one. But if you think about it, remember, your skin are, all that color is supposed to be the same. Those are still cells. That's integumentary. No, he didn't. I thought that was All right, extra finger. Some people have a, a little extra nub here. Some people get it cut off. Some people it grows out tremendously. Some it's just a little nub. That is um, harmless. No. 
It's just been, oh, yeah, it's it's like, it's like, well, some, sometimes some people, it grows out very long and they can, but some, it's just an extra piece of skin, really. Wait, but what if you have a skin tag, though? Yeah, that, that's a mutation, because isn't that supposed to copy all the same? What's a skin what is it? Like, extra piece of skin. So, and sometimes it gets checked to see if it's cancerous because remember, cancer is an overgrowth of cells. So they try. <laughs> I just really need you to control yourself. All right, albinism. We're going to look at that in just a moment. Albinism is harmless. So it's still, you still have that like, last example that you can still put there all in that one, that two lines. Um, it is not something that's contagious, it's not a problem. Again, it just changes the way the person looks. Now, the difference with albinism, it's not harmful, but they do have to not be exposed to so much sun because they don't have melanin. Um, so they could get um, skin cancer or skin um, sunburn and things like that exposed to too many of those rays. So you have to be careful of that and they're wearing sunglasses and stuff to protect their retina. Mm -hmm. All right, but here's the sickle cell example that I was telling you about, normal circular shape, they get caught. Here is the extra fingers. Like I said, some people it grows out to be a lot more prominent than others. And then some albinism examples. Just some animals. So here you have your albino rat. And we're, we're done writing. Um, and notice the eye color, they don't get pigment. So normally the, the uh, animals would be like of a whiter shade or a yellower shade or and have the red tones because it doesn't get the pigment. So here we have when Darius, he's about to be 18 now, but he was five, where um, an albino um, python. Then you have an albino turtle. I like turtles. An albino alligator. There's an albino crab compared to a regular crab, a regular pigmented crab. Or lobster, not a crab, lobster. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's an albino cat. Albino called Big, Miss Vicky. Albino hedgehog. Imagine that walking up to you. I'm like, really? Um, an albino um, young lady named Bianca. She's a true albino. There's some um, individuals who are not um, albino. I mean, who are albino, but have some traits of it, where instead of having the fully blonde hair, I'm white hair, and fully pale skin, maybe they're just lighter skin, their hair is just like a lighter blonde color, has that trait, but she actually is fully albino, and she's African-American. What? what? Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Um, here's an albino insect, so we can even have albino insects, and we have uh, albino grasshopper, or this is actually a locust. Um, there's an albino orchid. It's very pretty. And now what we're going to do is we're going to break off into...